Hi Year 12, it's Mrs Reed, and welcome to the first of our remote lessons looking at the film industry. Today we're going to talk about media regulation, what that is and also what it means for film. Okay, so EDUCAS asked us to uh, look at regulation. We're asked to consider it in light of media industries. So it comes up multiple times across our different set texts. We're asked to talk about the regulatory framework in the UK, as well as consider how media regulation might have changed or need to change in an increasingly globalised and digital media landscape. There's some key terms listed on the screen here, and these are terms that we we'll want you to be um, confident and familiar in using. They'll come up over the next couple of lessons, so do listen out for them and make a note um, of their definitions. So those are regulation, classification, watershed, convergence, the BBFC and the MPAA. Okay, so as a starting point, let's look at the word regulator. So the definition of a regulator is an authority who creates and maintains a set of rules. And rules are really important to understanding media regulation. They are those rules that certain media industries must follow. Um, they are established rules and procedures that are applied by government or other regulatory authorities. An example then is this, that media regulators set standards and codes of conduct that institutions should follow. And they may also oversee complaints from the public too. Okay, quick bit of thinking, recall on, on what we've covered so far or what you already may know. Who regulates advertising in the UK? You may have to think right back to September, October time for this. Do you know who regulates television in the UK? Or perhaps, who regulates film in the UK? You might just want to think about what rules film um, makers might have to follow. And particularly with regards to the age rating of films, for example. Okay. So I've created this useful graphic just to give you a visual idea of the different regulators that are involved um, in setting rules for our media industries. Now, we won't cover all of these in today's lesson. They will be ones that will come up as we go uh, to look at different case studies, but it's useful to give you that wider awareness of different forms of regulation. So if we start in the bottom right hand corner, you can see here Ofcom and Ofcom are our regulators for British television and radio. Now, one of the things um, that Ofcom are responsible for, in fact, one of the rules that they set out is the idea of the watershed. So um, the watershed is the time when TV programmes that are suitable for children can be broadcast. So just think for a moment, do you know what time that is? Okay, so well done if you knew already that the watershed in, in the UK is 9pm. So it's after 9pm then that um, more adult or mature television programmes uh, and films are allowed to be broadcast. And that's an important rule that's designed to um, protect children from witnessing content that is unsuitable for them. Okay, look at the top right then. Now we have ASA. Well done if you remembered them um, in the starter activity. So that's the Advertising Standards Agency. You might remember that we discussed these in relation to what we call the CAP code. So that is a set of regulations and guidance that advertisers must follow. And um, some of them include details to be truthful, i.e. they're not allowed to um, 
try to sell a product to us using misleading or false information. In fact, the ASA um, updated their guidance in recent years to ban um, harmful gender stereotypes in advertising. And I know that's something that we've discussed uh, within our lessons um, looking at audiences. If you look to um, the middle left hand side, then you can see Peggy, the pan European game information. Now you might be familiar with seeing Peggy, they um, set the age ratings for video games. And similar, um, in a similar way, then we have at the top left, the BBFC, and they will set the age ratings for um, the films, film industry in the UK. And that's who we're going to focus on for the rest of this lesson. So in Britain, films are regulated by the British Board of Film Classification, that's shortened down to the BBFC. Now, when we talk about classification, we're talking about a rating, a rating given to a film that tells us the suitability of it for a particular audience. This is determined by um, a set of criteria. Now, in the, in the first instance, that criteria means making sure um, that this is material that is not in conflict with the law in any way, it's not illegal, um, that it's not, not likely to cause um, harm to anyone. And they'll also look at uh, different categories, so the level of violence within the film, whether it involves uh, and has any reference to um, sexual content, um, whether there is inappropriate language, and they'll use them then to determine an age rating. The BB FC say themselves that classification is a process. It's the process of giving age ratings and content advice to films and other audiovisual content to help children and families choose what's right for them and to avoid what's not. So regulation does play an important role in, in the production and also the marketing of a film. We know that um, producers will have a particular target audience in mind when creating the film, but also when they're marketing, they're going to want to get it out there to a broad, uh, as broad an audience as possible. So they may have to carefully consider the content of the film and how that might be received in order to think about what age rating it might be given. And we know things like uh, a Disney family friendly Pixar movie, for example, is not going to feature um, a swearing and therefore it's going to be suitable for either a, a universal audience, everyone, or perhaps have a, a rating of PG. So given some parental guidance, if it features perhaps um, a little bit of violent, um, a fight scene and some violence perhaps. Sometimes we might see different versions of a film. So we have what we call the theatrical cut, that which is shown in cinemas. There might be a re-release at different times though of a, either a director's cut or even an extended version of the film. So therefore this might impact on the age rating given. It also is dependent on the country in which that film is being distributed and exhibited. So I talked already about the BBFC being our British um, regulator, but if we were looking um, at an American film being shown and released in America, then it would be the MPAA, and that's the Motion Picture Association of America, who would be the regulator of the film's rating system there. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at some examples then of classification. Um, and these hopefully are going to be familiar images to you. We can see here that we've got the packaging um, for some uh, films and also uh, video games where we clearly have the classification um, displayed um, for an audience to see. Now the BBFC, if we talk about film for a moment, will um, set out where, um, where these symbols must be displayed, um, exactly what they want to have displayed on those packaging, and in, indeed even what size those symbols must be. So they, they give a minimum sizing of 
14.8 millimeters. So it has to be clearly visible to the audience. And they also dictate, you know, on what um, products that these symbols must be shown. So on all theatrical materials. So for example, if you see big billboards or posters in the foyer of a cinema, we must be able to see um, the age rating. On all packaged media, um, such as DVD, Blu-ray, not just on the um, covers, but also on the, the discs themselves. Um, and they should be av available on digital media too. So for example, a film trailer that's released on YouTube. The BBFC also say then that classification symbols must be displayed before the final call to action. And I think that's a really important line actually for us to um, to use within our case studies, particularly if we're analysing a media text. Where is that classification shown? It must be shown before the final call to action. So in other words, um, before we go ahead and actually buy the tickets to see the film in the cinema, or before we go ahead and buy the a DVD um, at, a, at a counter. It also helps us to understand why, when we go to the cinema, we see the age rating again displayed on screen before we go ahead and watch the film. And we'll recognise that green picture there is that kind of conventional um, shot that we would see on screen before a film begins. Okay, so later in this video, I'm going to be recommending that you have a look at the BB FC website. It is fantastic and it features a whole range of resources on there, not just for uh, consumers, for parents, but also for students um, studying media as well. Um, so I've taken this poster from the website and that helps us to understand the different age rating system and also to see the, the universal um, symbols that will be used across on all of the British um, a DVD kind of packaging and film posters. Now these are new symbols, they actually were um, not released until the 31st of October 2019 um, and these are a more, more modernised, updated um, version of the symbols. They also now feature not only um, on our package material, um, but also for digital media. So you'll see these um, symbols used on Netflix in the UK as well now. They are... Um... Okay, so let's just have a look for a moment then. We can see the top one is U, that green triangle symbol telling us it's suitable for everyone. Um, they say that um, it should really be have a kind of a positive framework, that there shouldn't be any violence, threat or horror. So it's suitable for children of all ages. To go up from that then um, they, we have the yellow PG category, that's parental guidance. So they say there may be some scenes in these films that are unsuitable for very young children, but on the whole they are family friendly. Um, going up from that then we have our circular orange symbol, that's the 12A. And a 12A now determines that no one younger than 12 can see that film in a cinema unless they are accompanied by an adult. Um, so it's really uh, the advice is given to the uh, parent or guardian here to make sure that they think that the film is suitable before they take their child to see it. A 15 then um, becomes more significant this says that no one younger than 15 may see a film in the cinema and this is a legal requirement. A cinema will may lose its license if it is um, admitting children under 15 to see a 15 uh, rated film. Okay, it's prohibited and these films have um, much more adult themes, stronger language, violence, perhaps even sex and drug misuse might be evident at 15 rated film. And for 18, well, this is telling us that no one younger than 18 may see the film in a cinema. Again, the cinema would lose its license um, if children under 18 were permitted to see it. And an 18, um, 
rating here um, really can feature very strong content. Maybe things that might be uh, very violently graphic, maybe offensive to some adult viewers, may, you know, an 18, maybe a particularly um, gory and, and violent, even a horror film. Um, however, as long as it doesn't break the law, it's legal, it doesn't pose a significant risk of harm, audiences still have the freedom of choice. Okay, you are still able to make your own decision as to whether you think you want to watch that film or not.